right, so you've got the kind of compost system you want or digester. Um, we've got our site selection. So the next thing to choose is, uh, or the next thing to address, I should say, is what kind of stuff can you compost? Well, anything that comes from a plant and or an animal technically can be composted. Mother Nature is composting all the time. Uh, and that compost, the finished compost, is what's going to feed your garden or your lawn or the trees in the woods behind me. Right? Um, compost is a uh, humus is the technical term um, for compost. Right? That's what Mother Nature uh, creates. Uh, and we, because we're impatient, uh, like to uh, speed things up. And because tech typically we tend to be a bit wasteful, we have a lot more things to compost than, say, Mother Nature does. All right, so what kind of things? Food scraps, all right? And we're talking backyard system right now. Um, and so in your backyard system when you're composting, we, don't, uh, we recommend that you don't compost meat, bones, and dairy, right? And that's not because they won't compost down. Um, it's just because... Uh, Critters tend to, critters being like raccoons and skunks and even the crows, uh, tend to hone in on those smells um, and visuals. So uh, you don't definitely, uh, you, you don't really want them in it. I mean, if you don't mind, go ahead. I'll be honest, I have always composted all of my food scraps when I've composted outside. So um, except for raw meats and fish, I don't do that. But uh, anything cooked, I just throw in there. So that's your choice all right when you're in the house you can collect your food scraps with just about anything now yes can you get a fancy composter like or, the, or a food scrap collector like this one sure you can and it comes with this cool little uh charcoal filter that kind of keeps the smell down all right i've had this for probably about 20 years so uh this one's gonna stay with me all right because I'm going to keep using it. But if you're new to the game of food scrap collection, you can use anything out there. And as a matter of fact, we recommend that you do reuse whatever you have in the house, all right? Because as you know, reducing and reusing is, uh, is a more important step than even recycling, including recycling your food scraps. So here we've got an old uh, ice cream chub. We've got coffee uh, container. Even those little lettuces that you buy in the plastic containers can be used. And all of this fits very nicely right in the fridge so you can keep those smells down as you're collecting food scraps, all right? Or this giant coffee thing. So again, you can collect in anything. If you want to collect at home and, um, or collect in your kitchen and then um, take it to a larger bucket outside, which is what I do in my house, then uh, you can collect in you know, in anything. So here I've got an old Home Depot bucket that I had sitting around, and that's what I store all of my food scraps in until I am ready to compost them. All right, in a big, big batch. So, food scraps. So without food scraps, and as we learned earlier, um, those microbial friends, our, our bacteria and the fungi, and even the invertebrates, especially outside, so those FBI agents, really enjoy a certain recipe. All right, so we're gonna keep in mind, three parts brown food, like leaves, straw, wood chips, sawdust, shredded paper, all of those little newspaper things you get in the mail, shred those up and throw them in the compost pile. Why not, right? Um, so all of those brown foods, you want three times as much brown food as you do your green food, all right? Green food being, all of your food scraps, all right? High in nitrogen gives them the proteins they need to replicate. The brown foods, and today we're gonna to be uh, demonstrating with leaves, all right? Uh, brown food gives those microbes the energy they need to get the job done, all right? So, now we've got our, uh, our what we would call feedstocks, that's the technical term, but all of the stuff you need to build a healthy, successful, and delicious pile of food scrap, I mean of compost. All right, so we're gonna use our backyard three bin system here. Um, and we had already turned over our working bay, all right, our working, uh, working side. This is the side that's gonna be cooking down. We'll talk about that in a minute. So how do we build this pile, all right? Again, keeping in mind that three to one ratio, very important. Also keeping in mind 60 to 65% 
moisture is really critical and probably one of the top mistakes I see in backyard composting um, is that people don't think that they need to water it. Well, like you, those microbes, they need water to survive. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna, so this is, we we're working on building it. It's kind of like layering a lasagna, if you will. You'll hear the lasagna method a lot. All right, so um, I'm gonna actually just kind of dig a little uh, ditch in the middle here, all right? Um, like such with my handy dandy pitchfork. All right, this is Ethan's favorite composting tool, the pitchfork. All right, I've got my bucket of food scraps here. All right, it's about three fourths full. And I'm just gonna dump all of that right in the middle, right like that. All right, then I'm gonna take my bucket and I'm gonna stuff it with leaves. How many more, how many buckets of leaves do I need? Three, because I have about a bucket full of comp Here's three. Uh, uh, uh. All right, easy as that. Right like that. I'm gonna spread it out a little bit. I'm actually gonna use um, some leaves to throw around the sides too. I like to kind of insulate it um, from smells and attracting critters. Um, and critters being, again, the skunks, the raccoons, all of that stuff. So, I'm just gonna use what's left in here kind of insulate around the outside. Now, I tend to be a bit of a lazy composter sometimes, so I throw a few sticks and twigs in there. It uh, it creates air pockets for these guys to breathe. All right, so I'm just gonna shushle that around the outside a little bit. Give it a little insulation. All right, so now the last thing to do, probably got like a little food scrap stuck in your bucket here. Maybe you have running water out there. We do not here. So we got a bucket of water here. I'm just gonna give this bucket a nice little rinsle dinsle do ya. And I'm gonna pour that right over the top of my pile. Right like that. And this pile's pretty dry. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a bunch of more water. Even though it did just rain. And it's gonna rain later on this week. But because this is nice and open, it will dry out pretty quickly. And it's really windy here, so it'll dry out. You wanna keep a check on that, all right? So, we're ready to let that cook, all right? Until at least the next time. So we'll continue to build this pile up. The bigger the pile, the hotter it's gonna get in the middle. And as you will see from Amy McVay, she can get her piles up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so then this middle pile we turned over, and this is cooking, cooking away in here. So this is going to cure or cook away for maybe probably another year. So if you're looking for compost in like a year, less than a year in your backyard, it may happen. It may happen. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but it's probably not that likely, especially in an open system. And these are pretty large bays. Typically, you want three by three by three. All right, and fill it all the way up and then let it cook down. Um, that will get the heat going and that'll give that perfect environment for the microbes to start partying and go ahead and uh, kick up that heat a little bit. So this is cooking and I wanted to show you guys the moisture level. So we talked earlier about the squeeze test. I, my uh, my uh, motto is always dirty hands are happy hands. So dig on in there. So, if you dig on into this compost pile, and yes, it did just rain. Woo, look at that Mac Daddy. So there is one of those FBI agents, the fantastical earthworm, all right, night crawlers. These are not composting worms, all right, don't confuse them, but they do like the compost pile because they're eating a lot of that broken down um, soil in there. So Ethan, can you show us uh, what a uh, perfect moisture, or good moisture uh, content in our compost pile looks like? Sure. We're going to hope that this um, this compartment here has stuff that's a good example. So digging down beyond the leaf layer, there are more leaves on top, to get a good mixture, we are going to give it the squeeze test. So I'm going to, if I can wring water out of it, it is too moist. If it retains its shape, it is just right. Let's give it a shot. 
cannot wring any water out of it, but I certainly can make a nice compost ball. Excellent. Thank you. So the soil saver, much like the uh, homemade uh, three bin system that we just learned about, pretty much, I mean, you're gonna do the same thing. Only thing is this thing is nice and locked down, so you just wanna twist the locks off, all right? Looks very similar on the inside. Um, and it's a little dry, all right? Cause the soil saver um, does not come with these holes drilled, all right? I drilled those because we thought like it would help put rain in there. Um, but you can always just like, if on a rainy day, just leave the lid cockeyed like that and let the natural rain come in. So um, you're gonna build the pile up just like you did with the uh, three bin system. So, and that'll give it a little moisture. Cause remember, you want it to be like squeezed. So if you check this out, like if you dig down a little further and I get in here and I squeeze my compost, falls right apart, all right? Squeeze, falls right apart. That's not what you mean. That is way too, uh, not enough moisture, all right? What you would rather is, maybe if we dig down deeper, it's nicer down in the bottom. We'll see. So what you want is, yeah, even that's too dry. The whole pile is too dry. So all we need to do is add a bunch more water. So thankfully, I brought a bunch with me. And so that's how I would be fixing this pile. Probably even a little bit more. I'd probably just be dumping some in there like that. Because if it gets too wet, you can always add more leaves just kind of uh, to uh, level it out. All right, so we're ready to go. Boom, done. Put the lid back on. Snap it back down. Nice and secure. There, you've just created your soil safer compost.